How about that, folks? How about that? Wow. The Washington Nationals snatched victory from the jaws of defeat and won. I mean, it is, to say this is massively cool is an understatement. I mean, take a look at, look at this headline. You got to see this headline right here. Boom. Nats are World Series champions. Look at that. Howie Kendrick hit a go-ahead homer in the seventh as the Nats stunned the Astros for their first World Series title. They certainly did. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. That None of that would have happened had it not been, in part, large part, of the work of then, I should say back then, Washington Chief Administrative Officer Robert Bob, who was my boss in Oakland between 1997 and 2001 when I was trying to bring the Super Bowl to Oakland. And Robert Bob was hired to build the stadium to get the Montreal Expos to Washington to become the Nationals. How cool is that? And I just texted him today. I was trying to get him on the come on the phone, but he's at home battling the flu. But Washington is just <laughs> beside itself, just like, oh my God. And this kind of event is what large scale public projects are all about. It's about bringing cities together. It's about creating moments and happenings. It's about developing edifices so that you can not just earn a living, but have a great time living life. And yes, those Astros fans are sorrowful, but hey, consider that for the first six innings, they were like, holy cow. They were, you know, holy cow. Joseph Benzman, Joseph Benzman's chiming in. Uh, Joseph, how are you doing? Joseph says, uh, amazing win. Helps me get over my Yankees lost some more. I'm happy for veterans like Zimmerman and Scherzer, quality players who get a title. Good to see Washington has a good young core. Oh, yeah, definitely. But they got a good young core and they're actually older. You know, they're like th average age is 36 or something like that. Wow. Uh, and she says, um, so happy for the Washington Nationals. I am. And I'm really happy for Robert Bob because Robert, um, in fact, there's a, a great story here that I'm actually uh, linking to. It, it, it goes, uh, was the, this is something I want, want everybody to watch. Look at this, okay? Uh, was the $1 billion not Nash's Park gamble worth it? Um, it's this, uh, this is a story that I want you to see. Looks like if I can, oh, that's a commercial. Hold on a second. Let me, uh, let me hook up that commercial. Hey, everybody, welcome to the, Welcome to Zenny 62. I just something I want you to see uh, as we celebrate uh, the Washington Nationals winning uh, their first World Series and also uh, congratulating former Oakland Chief Administrative Officer and City Manager Robert Bob, who played a similar role in D.C., but with a bigger stage because he was hired specifically to get the Washington National Stadium built. And that's precisely what he did. Uh, and so you can't enough say- We have a new building that's gonna be this, built. This, 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 this building, we have, this have a great Navy Yard that- Here, listen to this. This is the story. This asked the question, was the $1 billion Nationals part gamble worth it? Listen to this. Total price tag for Nets Park will reach a billion dollars, we're told. Uh, that's when you add up the interest paid on the loans the district took out to build the stadium in the first place. Nathan Baca reports those who pushed for Nets Park from the beginning are taking an emotional run around the bases tonight.
ANC Commissioner Andy Litsky walks us around the Southwest Washington neighborhood he's called home for decades. We have a new building that's going to be built on the other side of this building. We have a brand new building that opened up on the corner. We have a brand new building that opened up on the corner there. Just blocks away from Nats Park, a mixture of low-income housing and new high-rise apartment buildings. We were a community of uh, just under 12,000 people. And now, in a very short period of time, we have more than doubled. Litsky was at first concerned about a baseball stadium next door, but over the years changed his mind. It was Mayor Tony Williams that took the gamble to bring baseball to D.C., a gamble he says is more than paid off. People forget uh, the baseball commitment won by one vote in the console. This wasn't an overwhelming, uh, you know, display of support. The children, our hospitals, our schools, first, then baseball. 2004 opposition to public funding of Nationals Park nearly stopped efforts to move the Montreal Expos baseball team into the district. I think it's really a story of people like yours, really, Linda Crobb, Jack Evans, uh, Mark Tuohy. Just Robert Bob hanging in there, sticking in there, making it happen. The district took out $534 million in bonds, loans to be paid back over 30 years for a mix of ticket I gotta sales. Pull that back, because listen to this, folks. Listen. People like story of people like yours, truly, Linda Crobb, Jack Evans, uh, Mark Tuohy, just Robert Bob hanging Robert in there. Robert Bob, right there, you said. Listen to Jack that. Jack Evans, uh, Mark Tuohy. Just Robert Bob hanging in there, Robert Bob. In That's there, making right. it happen. The district took out $534 million in bonds, loans to be paid back over 30 years from a mix of ticket, sales, and business taxes. Everything's been going so well, the revenues have more than doubled since 2006, so we're going to pay the bonds off 11 years early. The district's chief financial officer says with interest, the tab will come out higher than $1 billion. So by paying it off early and the economic success of it, we now can do the other things that we need to do with our infrastructure. But sports economist Dennis Coates oh, says public financing of stadiums often just moves tourism dollars from one area to another without creating true growth. The research suggests that it's about a wash, that the value is about equal to the cost that cities incur. As for Litsky, he's happy for Nats Park down the block, but still wishes the district would focus on getting people into and out of his neighborhood without the existing headaches. The transportation issues have not gotten any better, frankly. In Southwest Washington, Nathan Baca, WUSA 9. Well, the whole point is this. Congratulations to Robert Bob, because I'll tell you that Robert, before that, and uh, before that battle, tried to get a downtown stadium built, really just off the ground, for the Oakland Athletics at where, really across the street, where apartments are from what's going to be square, what used to be called the Sears, and then before that, the Capwells in downtown Oakland, okay? And Jerry Brown, and I'll tell you specifically when this happened, this was June 21st, June 12th, excuse me, uh, 2002 at 12.30 in the afternoon on a conference call, then Oakland Mayor, now former California Governor Jerry Brown said, I don't want a effing stadium downtown as long as I'm mayor. That's what he said, okay? That's what he said. He was dead set against it. And then he fired Robert Bob because he was trying to make it happen. And Robert, uh, when Robert came in, uh, he is now the president of the Robert Bob Group. He was an already well-decorated city manager in other parts of the country, like Richmond, Virginia. And he came to us uh, to replace Craig Koshin. And Craig went to Arvidia, Colorado. And so... Robert said, I'll never forget it, that he wanted to make Oakland do great things, okay? And she says, uh, it, it breaks my heart that Jerry Brown did that to the A's. The Raiders would have had the Coliseum all to themselves and renovated it. That's right. And so many anti-sports people in Oakland. Yeah, and for the wrong reasons. Uh, Oakland is afraid. I'll get to that in a second, but let me tell Robert's story. He says Robert got is ill. <laughs> but um, he... I'll never forget it. The Super Bowl 
for 2003 was supposed to be in San Francisco at a stadium that would have been beautiful if they ever had gotten off the ground. Even better than Levi, I have to say. Over at um, Candlestick Point. And that didn't happen primarily because Eddie DeBartolo and Ed Moransky, his right hand at the time, had actually used the wrong construction cost estimates for a stadium. So seeing an opportunity to get a Super Bowl that San Francisco was supposed to get but lost, Robert said to Jerry, hey, let's go after this. But they hemmed and hawed about it. And a number of the Oakland council members were, you know, as usual, on the fence, but not really willing to do anything. But Robert wasn't giving up. And I had been transferred from the mayor's office. I had already helped the mayor and already helped the Raiders reestablish a point order preseason game. And so Robert said, we were in a meeting talking about something that had nothing to do with Super Bowl or sports, the International Council of Shopping Center Spring Convention. And Robert said, I want to bring Super Bowls to Oakland. And everyone looked at him like, what's he talking about? And I knew what he was talking about because I had wanted to be involved in the talks, but Ignacio De La Fuente and Lewis Cohen didn't let me in. Just, hey, they're, they're friends of mine now, but that's the truth. That's the way it went down, okay? So um, after the meeting, I said to Robert, hey, you should call Joe Brown in the NFL. And he goes, no, you call him. And I did. And to make a long story short, that's how I wound up heading the effort to bring Super Bowl to Oakland. But Robert had, had wanted Oakland to get out of its doldrums of not doing things and always finding an excuse not to do something great. That was his my idea. And the problem is that, uh, the problem is, hold on a second, Hennessy, I don't want to go there yet. The problem, I want to tell Robert's story. The problem is that Robert and what he could do wasn't re respected, okay? It just simply wasn't respected. And um, he went to a better place. He went to Washington, D.C. It was one city council vote, as you heard. There were people who were still on the fence because it's public dollars. But what people don't understand to this day about the use of public money for sports is it's not getting all of these studies done, which look at all of these different examples of deals as if they're the same deal, and then analyzing them. No, it's saying, how can we structure the best deal for what we need, okay? If you're gonna to bring together between 20,000 and 70,000 people into one area, the question is, what kind of uses do you have to make people spend their money there? What kind, do you, are you able to allow them to buy condominiums? Are you able to allow them to live affordably? Are you able to allow them to live and enjoy? Do you have a big screen outside where even if they can't afford a game, a ticket to get inside to watch the Super Bowl or the World Series or the NHL hockey championships, what have you, can they enjoy the excitement of their city's team winning without spending a lot of money? And those are the questions that have to be asked. We know about the history, we know about the past, but what happens is that people do these stupid things, like they'll compare something that was built way back in the 60s with something that was built in the 80s with something that was built in the, the, the aughts, and they slam them all together and they come up with this conclusion, like you heard that, that stupid economist on there. They do that all the time. And it's some you know journalist who always you know wants to get somebody to give them the typical economist point of view as opposed to realistic developer economics point of view about how a stadium helps the city. You want to see a great example of how stadiums help cities? Look at what's going on with Washington and Nationals. You heard it. Look at all the buildings around there that are built. That'll happen down in Jack London. We have the ability to shape and control our destiny with the use of public dollars. We also have the ability to say, hey, look, we want to hire Oakland First policy. We want you to hire union labor. We can, if, if public dollars are involved, it gives the city a right to make a statement regarding how it wants itself to be shaped now and into the future. But if it's entirely private, you, you lose that, okay? That's what people don't get. Oakland has always found an excuse, always some excuse not to do something great. And let's look at where we are now, okay? Watching another city, in this instance, Washington, be great because Robert Bob, by the grace of God, frankly, was called to make it happen. He was called to do 
what he does best. He makes deals. He, he understands how to run a public institution. He understands how to, he has the will and the initiative to complete big projects. Let me put it that way. And so what Oakland has a tendency to do is it takes people who have the will and the initiative to complete big projects and it chases them away. We got to stop doing that. We have to stop doing that. Let me read your comments now. Uh, and congratulations to Robert Bob. I texted him. You might be watching right now. Robert, man, I hats off to you, man. Uh, I'm really proud of you. And uh, they ought to have you in the per Washington Nationals parade uh, when it happens. You ought to be in one of those cars, front and center waving and enjoying the heck out of that moment. You deserve it. Um, and Oakland deserves to see it and to know that you were involved to understand what they gave up, what they lost, okay? And the current mayor, Libby, ought to be calling you and saying, hey, you know what? I have a problem here and I need your help, okay? Period, all right? Um, let me read your comments. Peace, everybody. Hey, Patrick, how you doing? She says, uh, the A's need to design the ballpark like Camden Yards at Petco. I like the park, the design they have now. I think it's gorgeous. If they build that, it will be the finest ballpark in the world, period. End of story. Albert Sancho says, since the Cubs didn't make the postseason and the Dodgers got eliminated, so proud of the Nationals winning the first World Series. I agree. Albert goes on to say, living in D.C. ain't cheap. It's almost expensive, as expensive as Oakland, <laughs> so I've heard. Um, she says, it breaks my heart that Jerry Brown did that to the A's. The Raiders would have had the Coliseum all to themselves and renovated it. So many anti-sports people in Oakland. Hennessy says, do you think that Oakland will be without any sports team in the next five years? It could happen. I mean, look at where we are now. I mean, I'm 3,000 miles away. You know, you don't hear Oracle Arena anymore. You don't hear Oakland with respect to the Warriors anymore, except in the past tense. You are looking at a situation where people are just waiting with bated breath for the people that are involved with the Las Vegas State to really get their act together and finish the thing and do it well rather than trying to rush it and do it awfully. But the bottom line is, come in the next, let me just put it this way, the next 18 months, all right? The next 18 months, we know the Raiders are gone. 18 months. That takes us through next year. Am I saying the Raiders will be back for next year? I think there's a good possibility that'll happen. But after that, hey, we're down to one. And the athletics are basically pushing ourselves, pushing us, to say, okay, we they're asking for things that are difficult for us to want to give up. There is a middle ground if we know what we're doing. We can achieve both, but we want, we have to want a, we have to be able to craft an alternative deal that's attractive to the athletics. And right now we haven't done that because they're going to get, I'll say this again, they're going to get $1 billion in subsidy from Howard Terminal. They don't want people to know that. You start doing, you do the math, that's where it comes out to. Very easy. Stadium down there at Howard Terminal is 1.3 billion at least, 1.35 billion, maybe more, okay? The tax increment area around it for infrastructure purposes is about $800 million. You're already over 2 billion, use that as a base year assessed value, you go up 40 year bond period, and you start looking at some, if it's an average 4% growth, Boom, you're right there, 1.4 billion in subsidy. Okay? People are gonna look at that, and they should have, they should, the A's know this. If the A's don't know this, they have no business in this business. But I know it. I've done these calculations. The A's know it. The city needs to get its act together and figure out how to structure an alternative. The city of Oakland is sitting on enough money to rid itself of its homeless problem, and I don't mean in a bad way, I mean in a good way. And we grow the city so it's for everybody. The greatest example of malpractice sits right in your face. Not, I'm not, when I say this, right in your face. I'm going to say I'm the greatest example of it, but I'm telling you what it is. And basically it's, you've got the Washington Nationals winning in a stadium that Robert Bob played a giant role in developing, who was the chief administrative officer in Oakland, but he was chased away for trying to build a stadium for the A's downtown in Oakland. Okay, did it in D.C., all right? They're the world's champions, so not everybody around the world knows it. Meanwhile, we're sitting here on the precipice of losing our baseball team, having already lost our basketball team and our football team, okay? 
That is a situation right now. And so, yeah, and so it's a movie. You can make a movie out of this. You know, forget Richard Jewell. You can make a movie, you can call the movie Robert Baum. <laughs> okay? Um, Hennessy, there's your, so there's your answer, Hennessy. Chi says the Raiders could have hired a HOK sports architect firm. Actually, they did, Chi, uh, to rebuild the Coliseum with the A's gone. You would have gotten the Super Bowl nod, Zenny 62. Uh, that's, I, I appreciate that, but that's kind of taking things out of alignment. First of all, HOK was hired by the city of Oakland thanks to John Russo when he was city attorney back in 2000. And he had HOK produce the now famous document, which has an executive summary that gave an analysis of seven different possible sites for an Oakland athletic stadium. The number one site chosen was Uptown Entertainment District, right again, right next to the Sears, what is now the Square Building, bordered by, it is bordered by 22nd, Telegraph, and San Pablo, going down to where the Fox Theater is. It's approximately a oh, 14 acre site. That was, the, and there are a number of artists' renditions of what that was going to look like, okay? And all of those were spearheaded by Robert Bob and also John Russo. They really wanted that. It was Jerry who stood in the way. And did he need to? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No. The, the Oakland of today would have been a, we would have had even more money to build affordable housing had that been built. Why? Because we would have had this downtown focal point, which is known worldwide for sports and the A's, and people from far and wide would want to live down there, and we would have had to cap all kinds of price controls and everything, and we would have had surplus money to assist in the development of even more affordable housing, okay? But Jerry did not want it, all right? He wanted he wanted the market to take over. The market has not been kind to anybody who's been poor or black, okay? Government spending is there to correct the market. That's what government spending is about. If you don't spend government money, appropriately for economic development, you're not correcting the market. If you're just right now, Oakland's just letting the market take over. That's what Libby is doing. And people are getting pushed out because they can't afford it. The city's doing nothing. It says it's doing something, but then you have Derek Sue, a homeless man who's running for mayor of Oakland, okay? Who said on video, and it's on Oakland News Now, you can check it out, oaklandnewsnow.com. Just type Derek, S-O-O-O, Sue. And... They're kicking homeless people out of encampments around the city. And they don't know where they're going to go. And folks, you know what? The holidays are approaching, okay? So which is better? Spending money on sports and economic development and housing and affordable and extremely low-income housing or what we're doing now? I kind of like the other thing. I think you did too. Um, so Chi, HOK was brought in to do that study. And... We've had a number of studies done that have not been implemented. We now have no excuse but to implement. And what the athletics should do is they don't really need the Coliseum, okay? And if they do, they need to explain numerically why, because the council, the C Oakland City Council is under the impression that the A's are going to build an entirely privately financed stadium. The A's have no intention of doing that. And so it's wrong for the athletics to set up this, this idea that, oh, you know, we're gonna build all this with, with private money when it's about that close to having the governor of California, Gavin Newsom, sign into law a provision that will unlock the keys for them to get billions of dollars. I didn't not, I did not stutter, billions of dollars in subsidy from a tax increment zone at Howard Terminal. You would say, why so much? Because the, the land down there is all eval already valuable, excuse me, and the A's are insisting on privately owning their own stadium. When they privately own their own stadium, and it's within the tax increment financing zone, what happens? It becomes part of the total assessed value of the zone. That's what happens. So, um, no, but don't want to get off the track. Robert, push for Robert is the kind of guy who. Um, uh, 
comes from a military background, a real stickler for details, um, always a snatty dresser, always had the double the double collar uh, double collar shirts. He would wear the suspenders like he was on Wall Street. <laughs> nice suits, okay. He is he is a true a true government professional. When you meet Robert, that's that's what you come away with. This man is a true. He was the consummate government professional. So he went on from um, uh, Oakland, not just to Washington. And then he was hired to fix the Detroit financial system, the school system. He was actually on 60 Minutes talking about that a few years ago. So um, I wonder if there's a, a resume I can find for Robert. I had something around here before. Let me uh, let me see here. Uh, hey, Roland Dubs, how you doing? Uh, Robert, Bob, uh, career, like that. Maybe if I type that. And um, I want to be on his website. Uh, waiting for this to open up. So while I'm waiting for that to open, uh, here we go. Yeah. Uh, our team. I'll read, I'll read, I'll read, I'll read this about him. This is Robert right here. Uh, okay. Boom. There's Mr. Bob. As we, all, we always call him Mr. Bob. 40 years of experience. He is the president and CEO of the Robert Bob Group. Um, Education, Business, MS, and Western Michigan University, Kalamazoo, bachelor's degree of, uh, in political science from Grambling, from Louisiana, certificate program, senior executives in state and local governments, Harder University, John F. Kennedy School of Government, fellow Broad Foundation, urban school superintendents, um, academy, academy honorary doctorate of laws degree, Walsh College. And Robert Bob leverages more than 40 years of executive management experience in both the private and public sectors. He is the owner, president and CEO of the Robert Bob Group, LLC, a multifaceted private public sector consulting firm specializes in turnaround consulting and advisory services, financial organizational restructuring, expert witness services, budget management services, labor relations, economic development advisory services, emergency planning, public safety and policing, real estate and asset management services, education, local, state, federal government, turnaround, and contract negotiations. Robert Bob Group primary objective is to help governments, schools, and businesses find financial and operational solutions, greater efficiency, and long-term viability. Uh, recently, Mr. Bob served as emergency financial manager of the 87,000 student Detroit public schools from March 2009 through May 2011. Robert was appointed emergency financial manager by Michigan Governor uh, Jennifer Granholm, who was, which is extended by her successor, Governor Rick Snyder. And DPS was a school district in crisis. As you can tell, this is a good, a good rundown. And then uh, as we go down here, uh, it says, Mr. Bob is a former city administrator and deputy manager for Washington, D.C., and served as the District of Columbia's Homeland Security Advisor. He managed a workforce of approximately 20,000 employees and an annual budget of $8 billion. Uh, he also served as a board director as a, of the Washington, D.C. Chamber of Commerce, uh, as well as the chairman of the board of the D.C. Children's Youth Investment Trust Corporation. Prior to this, Mr. Bob served as the city manager of Oakland, California, and executive director of the Oakland Redevelopment Agency, city manager of Richmond. So as you can see, Robert has a long and extensive uh, career list here, and um, uh, this goes on and on and on and, and on. <laughs> so, um, you know, and by the way, for those of you who might be wondering, no, this is not something that I was paid to do. I did this spontaneously because I'm proud of Robert. Um, but heck, man, you can pay me if you want to. <laughs> no, uh, not at all. I'm just uh, very, 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 very proud of Robert and uh, learned a great deal from him. In fact, those of you who um, mention, who remember, who watch my show regularly might remember when uh, I said that uh, Robert, um, has, I said that Robert um, was the one who actually caused me to stay in Oakland because I wanted to run economic development in Oakland uh, they didn't, Jerry Brown didn't have that in mind for me. And, uh, I was just going to quit. Um, and so I didn't quite know what I was going to do. And 
but I was pissed off because I also wanted to run the Coliseum and then Ignacio de la Fuente didn't want me to run the Coliseum. Uh, and I had great plans for the Coliseum. So Robert told me to go and talk to Bill Claggett, who was the head of director of economic development. And I did, and we had lunch and the lunch at that time, we're friends now, but you know, it was, he says, well, you talk like you think you know everything. And I thought, and I was insulted. So I came back and I remember running into Robert uh, as I'm going out the door at the side of City Hall, and he's going in, and he goes, so how did it go with Claggett? And I says, well, he says, I talk like I think I know everything. And he, Robert, Mr. Bob says, well, well, you do. You're young, you're black, you're smart, you're a threat. Oakland is a crab barrel town. It likes to pull down people. And uh, I said, Mr. Bob, just because you said that, I'm going to stick around. I'm going to take that job you offer me. So I went over to economic development as a sort of a placeholder, and that's where I was when he asked me to head the effort to bring Subo to Oakland. No one gave us a chance at all. People were saying that I shouldn't be involved, that it should be George Vukasin, who was the former president of the Coliseum and the CEO of Peerless Coffee. He's passed away, sadly. But George didn't want to do it. So it was all these people that didn't want to do it. I remember Dave Newhouse saying, well, it shouldn't be you. And I said, well, Dave, it's me. Okay? Are you The people you're mentioning are they're white. Are you saying that I shouldn't be walking on black? What's the deal? Okay? I said, you know what? I'm going to bring the Super Bowl to Oakland. So out of 11 cities competing for the 2004 and 2005 Super Bowls, it came down to three cities for the 2005 Super Bowl, and one of them was Oakland. And we were named as one of the finalists, and everyone went ape. They couldn't believe it. I remember Oakland District 1 Council member, then Jane Bruner, said, oh, this is amazing. We didn't give you a chance. Yeah, I know. Okay? So... It was, and I, I mentioned that as a, as a deliberate thumb in the eye of Oakland because Oakland has something in its DNA where it doesn't want to be great. And when it brings in the market, it lets the market take over and build these structures all over the place that have these outrageous rents like $8,000 a month and then, has, and then cause all this social discord. That's not urban planning. It's, it's what it is, it's market run amok, but it's not urban planning, okay? So, uh, Rolling Dove says, does your brain ever hurt for being so smart? <laughs> Thanks. Um, no, I think I'm dumb. Let me put it this way. I'm always learning, okay? I'm always learning. Uh, I've, I've taught myself programming languages. I took programming languages in school, but those are the old kind, like, you know, Fortran, 77, Wafa, whatever. I don't want to talk about me like that, okay? I appreciate that. Um, let's move forward. And, um, hey, Black Lion, how you doing, man? What do you think about the Washington Nationals World Series win? And not only that, we have to say, I have to also say this, okay? Now that the Astros have lost, we can root for the athletics to come back in and take over and win in 2020, right? God, 2020. Hey, welcome to Zenny 62, everybody. Uh, and... Uh, by, by the way, a, a big round of applause collectively for Robert Bob. Congratulations, man. You deserve it. You deserve it. You did a fantastic job staying the course, you know, staying the course and dealing with all the politics. It was not easy. You heard the clip. It wasn't easy, but they got it done. And now there are people celebrating all over the place. Folks are happy. Uh, if you've ever been to D.C. when I was there for the inauguration, I've been, I've been there twice for the inauguration of Barack Obama. And I'm telling you, it is an amazing place. Uh, a lot of, it, you should visit D.C. at least once and see your government at work and, and get to know uh, the lay of the nation's capital. It's a really great town. And I can only imagine how much fun it is to... Um, to be there right now and again uh, i hope robert is in the parade he deserves to be there if anyone sees this is in dc put robert in the parade man <laughs> put robert in the parade uh definitely in fact um let's see if there's more um hey jamal how you doing what do you think about the nationals man and uh, i'm i'm gonna watch you robert bob washington uh nationals See if uh, there's anything I may have missed. Um, and actually, yeah, number one is us. But um, it says here. Da, 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 da. 
Uh, um, let's see here. Um, pin by I had Robert. Yeah, we we'd come down to talk about that a, a little bit ago, and uh, okay, let's see. We've got this. This what I'm looking for is a bit of so much. Petersburg hires our Bob group. And um, let's see here. Uh, we've got parking deal done, learner is quiet. And Barbara Bob opened downtown baseball stadium plan. I think that was me. And he went through a lot here. There's a lot of deal points mentioned here. Robert, and, and there was a time at one point that Robert was gonna return to Oakland to fix the sports issue as a consultant. And that was just before, um, that was in 2008. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. Uh, then there was one person that he, um, that everybody had to deal with who almost killed baseball in DC. Her name is Linda Crop. The appropriate name, Linda almost cropped baseball. They, they, the headline here, um, almost cropped baseball. She just changed her mind and told Mayor Williams that there's no deal unless he can find 50% of private funding on the eve of the vote. Yeah, she did it on the eve of the vote. I remember Robert talking about that. And um, and so these, these these just going all through this, I don't understand what her problem is. A lot of people want baseball and are willing to pay the taxes and enjoy the benefits. She needs to... Um, <laughs> some of these, this is on the Redskins. I'm reading the Redskins list, sir, but this is what I'm reading, folks. <laughs> This is the Redskins listserv, okay? This is like this comment, okay? <laughs> okay? So, um, so at any rate, uh, the D.C. Council approved legislation late tonight that dramatically restructured Mayor Anthony Williams' deal with Major League Baseball to build a stadium in Washington. This is 2004. Uh, by requiring that at least 50% of the project be funded with private money. Uh, Chairman Linda Kropp shocked her colleagues after 11 hours of debate on the stadium financing package by offering the amendment at about 10 p.m. after saying she was disappointed by recent talks with Major League Baseball. Uh, this is what Robert went through. And keep in mind that that project won by one vote. So one vote negative, boy, we would not be here talking about how fantastic it is that D.C., the Washington Nationals, won the World Series and that Robert Bob was a city administrator who built the stadium that the Washington Nationals play in, and he was the same person that tried to get it done in Oakland only to be fired by Jerry Brown because he didn't want a downtown baseball stadium. I mean, how many times can you roll that around your head and just go, what? Okay? And in light of the success of the Washington Nationals, a decision like that has to be called even more into question. What were you thinking? What was the deal? I mean, I know what he was thinking. Okay? Everyone was like, well, Jerry doesn't like sports. Well, wait a minute. He's the mayor. The mayor is not elected to let his personal opinion rule over the city. The mayor is elected to build the city, not shape the city around his view or vision. It's to build the city. Ugh. So uh, anyway, um, it, it's, he came a long way. It says, city administrator Robert C. Bob said crops move came as a total shock. I think it's real bad, he said. The question is where they violate the stadium agreement. I think we have given an opportunity to walk. Well, as you know, they didn't walk. They stuck around. So, uh, and and he 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 got it, he got it done. He got it done. So um whew, it uh it's something when you go through these stories of how projects don't get done or do, like with me in the Super Bowl, and I remember Robert didn't want, he didn't want to take us, our effort to the council because there are people who 
just were opposed to something they didn't understand. And then we had to sit back and watch San Francisco build a stadium and then get the Super Bowl and, and then host it and do a great job. And so here we are as a city basically hoping we get the, you know, the crumbs from San Francisco's riches. That's, that's the position we were in. As opposed to building a new stadium, okay, or in, and or bidding on the Super Bowl. In other words, building a new stadium and then getting a Super Bowl or bidding on the Super Bowl with the existing stadium and the 12,000 seat plan that I spearheaded for the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. No one's done that before or since, okay? Oh, Cowboy Wrestler, bad news. What? Um, Cowboy Wrestler says ESPN. Oh, that's what Merlin Dubs meant with S. Curry. ESPN is reporting that Steph Curry has a broken hand. Shh, hold on a second. All right. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Uh, wait a second. Full practice for, wait a minute, this is news. Steph Curry and Warriors should be a long season in the city. This is so new, I might even see it. It must be on Twitter. Let me get the Twitter. Uh, somebody said, named Food writes, I don't care about any of this unless it involves the A's. Food, you can go, okay? I'm talking about this. You have to understand it does involve the A's, but this is also history. So learn, stay and learn, or go to bed. But this is, I'm focusing on Robert Bob and what he did in D.C. that should have been done in Oakland. Okay, this is a flogging, <laughs> all right. Period. All right. So, so I, and I'm saying it straight out, just like that. Oakland ought to be ashamed of itself to be in this position where it, it has to sit back and and look at something that could have been done in Oakland, but was done someplace else with a person that it got it let go, and should still hire back. Oakland should. Oakland should hire Robert Bobber right now to straighten out the A's situation. You can't say Robert doesn't have, you know, what they say, skin on the wall, right? He does. Libby, hire the man. Call him right now and hire the man. Whew, okay? Wow. Man. We have to want to have greatness, okay? Um... And so she says, uh, Oakland has some racism issues, but African-Americans need to step it up and get organized. Well, she, uh, here's the problem, okay? A, a, a lot of black folks have left Oakland. And we don't, but, but what happens is that we don't have, we don't have an infrastructure, okay? Um, <laughs> she says, wow, Steph is hurt. Bob Myers is a broken team. Rob Byman says, Warriors about to become a lottery team. Uh, yeah, that that's the way it looks. Because they're down to, what, Draymond? Steph and Draymond. They got rid of Andre. Um, you know, that's... These aren't the... These aren't... These aren't, our, these aren't the Warriors that we knew, obviously. And um, uh, she says, Ethiopians and Middle Eastern... Well, I don't know about that. Uh... And D'Angelo Russell. Hey, uh, Rob, I mean, thanks for the save. Thank you. And D'Angelo Russell. But even, I got to admit, man, D. Russ did not impress, man. D. Russ is not the acquisition I thought he was going to be. Or maybe it's just how they're playing him. Well, obviously it's how they're playing him. But how they're playing him is such that he's not the acquisition I thought he was going to be. Maybe you have a different take uh, on that, you know. But look, this is all happening as the Lakers are resurgent. They got the right mix of players. The Clippers are resurgent. Um, you've got the suddenly effective OKC, and you've got, of course, the Rockets. And all of these, all of these teams are, are quite literally sharks. Oh, hey, thanks for the investment. Uh, she says Warriors are tanking for a limo, limo ball, Lavar Ball. <laughs> uh, could be, you know, uh, it could be, but. Jamal Zilla said he can't run a two-guard. 
Bob Wyman says, may not may not hurt for the Warriors to draft in one year. Cowboy Russell says, Mavericks. Black Lion says, uh, the, it's the curse for leaving Oakland. But, you know, think about that. All of this, all of this is happening at the same time, right? You know? I mean, we see the Washington Nationals winning the World Series guided by a fantastically managed team playing in a stadium that was built by the former Oakland chief administrative officer slash city manager. At the same time, the Warriors leave Oakland and go to San Francisco thinking they're going to win and losing, right? And there, there's a story here about how we don't, we're not building to maintain and then for those teams that leave us, they lose. So we could build to maintain what we had and keep the magic in Oakland. We didn't do that. So the Washington Nationals get their stadium and win the World Series. But then for those teams that leave us, they suck. <laughs> okay? There's your storyline right there. Oakland's right in the middle. Which means what? It means we still have that kind of weird magic. That's that kind of sauce, right? But, all right. What do we do to capture it, you know? Uh, Roland Dub says, Utah, my mother says I should run for mayor, but I, no. Nah. No, because I'm one person. I can't do certain things like help her and run for mayor. Um, I, I feel that my future is in building this business and building this unique form of communication. And this has really allowed me to enjoy a life that um, I've always wanted to enjoy in the way I want to enjoy it, want, want to enjoy it. Uh, it's not to say that if, if I were mayor, I would be the best mayor Oakland ever had, but the timing isn't right for me. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, but I will say this again, if I were mayor, I would be the best mayor Oakland ever had in its entire life. All right, now, um, she says, uh, Lakers run the NBA, not the Clippers. <laughs> Cowboy Russ says, I'm, I'm sad that the Warriors left Oakland, but I'm relieved they stayed in the market. Yeah, I mean, what they developed over there, we can't take lightly. I can't. It's beautiful. I remember, you know, this actually Giants 2.0, because when the Giants moved to build their stadium at what was called Pac Pell Park, that area was a, was run down. It was covered over by the Embarcadero Freeway. It was a no person's land under King Street. You didn't want to be caught at night under the overpass, the Embarcadero Freeway overpass on King Street. You would, something bad would happen to you. Uh, at the least, you would have a hard time getting a cab. There was no wide share in those days, okay? Then the Loma Prieta earthquake came through in 89, flattened it, unfortunately. And um, a guy named Buck Helm uh, lost his life in the flattening of that structure that when it happened on in Oakland, the because the uh, Nimitz Freeway had this break off to 880 to go. It was double decked and it like that. Uh, all those structures went uh, went down, if you will. What was left in their place after they were demolished and taken out? was this new uh, hundreds of acres of new developable land. And that's where the Giants built their new stadium. And now, look at the area around there. It's beautiful. And then they continue down to, what, to Mission Bay. And where the Giants are now, it was, all, it was slated, slated for a large-scale event center, and they certainly got one, didn't they? Um, now they have it set up where you can take BART, then go from BART to Muni, take third, ride the train all the way to where you stop right in front of Chase Center, where you can go across the street and get a great um, uh, great Middle Eastern dish. I forgot, the, uh, I forgot the guy's name, the guy's restaurant. I'll remember another time. Um, and there's, I'm sure, more restaurants by the many uh, there since the one time that I went over with my friend Beth uh, to take a tour around. That was when the things were just getting going. Um, so, 
Alberto says, Warriors losing badly, no Curry. Cowboy Russ says, like it or not, Chase Center is going to be a money-making machine. Hey, it already has a $2 billion. It's already racked up $2 billion in sponsorships. She says, I remember the old Cypress Freeway. Yes, thank you. The Cypress Freeway. Yes. Um, and Black Lion says, the Raiders went to L.A., where fans loved them and still didn't match what they left in Oakland. What do you think is going to happen in Vegas? The curse, I tell you. No, I think you're right. They're, they're, it, it's not going to be the same. They're not going to get the same love. Um, they're not going to get the same feverance. And so, unless unless they start winning, if they start winning and winning and winning, you know, the way Vegas is, they'll all, they'll all turn their front runner and say, oh yeah, I liked them before they were here. Watch. If they start running. If they don't, It'll be, oh, man, we wasted all this taxpayer money on them. So, uh, unless, and then that'll happen until they get the Super Bowl. And then they'll say, hey, this is a fun thing. All right. Um, Alboff says, Clippers should move back to San Diego to go to Seattle. She says, agree. Both Oracle Ballpark and Chase Center are a great location on the side of downtown San Francisco. Cowboy Wrestler, Cowboy Wrestler says, Black Lion, same thing that happened to them in L.A. They will love them for the first couple of years, yep, but will abandon them once they start losing. Yep, Jamal Mills adds, yeah, I really think the Raiders will not succeed in Vegas unless the NFL helps them. Yes, which is already happening. I understand they got a credit extent, debt extension some uh, earlier this year. Um, that's rumor. I haven't been able to confirm it. But... Uh, Considering the lean issue and everything, it makes a lot of sense that that would happen. Rob Iman says, Kwanki is starting to have concerns about the Chargers and Inglewood. Yes. Uh, Black Lion says exactly CW about CW's comment about LA. Rob Iman says, uh, Clippers are looking to build a new arena in Inglewood. Oh, that's going to be exciting. Have you seen that thing? Um, and then he says, um, PSL sales have been really low for the Chargers. Yep. Cowboy Wrestler adds, Clippers are not uh, leaving LA. Steve Ballmer is already committed to building a new arena in Inglewood, right? Uh, Chi says, Oakland Raiders have to win these next three games, home games, no excuses. They should blow out the Lions. I believe the Raiders... Uh, you know, let me, let me amend that statement, okay? Let me amend that statement. The Raiders win a close game. But I do see this scenario where Marvin Jones, who came from Cal, goes off against our secondary. I'm just saying, all right? They just, they just popped into my head, all right? Um, but that said, I'm still concerned about the linebacker situation, as I said the other night. It's a close game, but I, I'm going to give the home field advantage in that, that factor. And I'm gonna say the Raiders come out and blow out the blow out the Detroit Lions. Crush them at the Coliseum. Um, Alberto says, no Clippers are moving back to San Diego with the Chargers. No, they're not. Uh, Chi says, no, they're really not. That's not happening. Chi says, unless the um Spanish family uh, decline moving in, I don't believe it. The LA Chargers can rebound, but they are stuck with Phillip Rivers. She says the Raiders will win close against Detroit. Raiders have a good offense. Uh Albert says, uh, L.A., we get an expansion team within the AFC. Cowboy Rush says, I truly think the Chargers will be back in San Diego by 2025. All right. Folks, um, it is almost 1 o'clock. We had a um, I, there's a possibility I may be taking a trip tomorrow, depending on the flights. We had a um, loss of a very close a friend of the family, but um, to work out some things, okay? This is rather sudden stuff. So I'm gonna to have to uh, camp. I'm gonna to have to uh, close this one off. Well, it's been 53 minutes already, but I will be back. Um, if we don't take the trip, I'll be back tomorrow, um, and possibly. And let me put it this way: definitely, definitely uh, Friday for a live stream. Okay. Uh, Rob Iman says I think the owners are going to nudge down Dean Spanos to sell the Chargers. Once they see all the empty seats at Sophie Stadium next year, that's going to be embarrassing. You know, to have that brand new, beautiful stadium uh, and they can't put seats in it. And I'm also concerned that, thank you, for, Chi, I'm concerned that the Raiders Las Vegas Stadium 
is coming along, but I'm also concerned about the money problem. And I say that because I haven't heard any new announcements regarding uh, sponsors. Um, and the November 18th meeting will reveal a lot, or should reveal a lot, regarding where they are financially. But I'm going to start doing some digging in another way. But I digress. Congratulations to Robert Bob. Remember that name, folks. Robert Bob. Celebrate what Robert did. Read about him. Um, he's a he's a larger than life guy in government circles, and um, really proud of him because again, were it not for his work and his steadfast focus, I remember one, one thing Robert used to always tell us. He would say, you know, because sometimes you get uh, the people be they council members or members of the community, they always throw something up that you didn't expect. And Robert would always say, uh, don't, don't pay. He said, don't get interrupted by the sniper fire, you know, and just, just focus. Uh, that was, that was one big thing. And I think for me, and I, and I, and I, I'll, I'll, I have to tell this story because when I was trying to bring Subo to Oakland, I, and I've talked about this before, but it's been a while. Um, I thought I had a deal with Willie Brown where I got San Francisco to help us with our hotel, signing up hotels. We needed 24,500 hotel rooms within a hour's drive of the Coliseum. Um, and so I went out to celebrate. I went to this place called Harry Denton's. Not the Star Wars Light Room, but Harry Denton's South, South, South Side. This was a long time ago. It was back in... Uh, 1999 um and um so specifically may and i ended up going bar hopping and went to some with my friend richard lieberman who's a blogger now and then i went over to merchants and when i got in my car i had a 97 ford probe black and um next thing i knew i was headed the wrong way up the freeway ramp off the Nimitz and I saw this car coming at me and I just sort of I crashed my car to avoid a car and um, they you know took me to get a breathalyzer I was I had a little too much and um, I remember I thought I remember um, oh boy I'm gonna be in here for a while because they took me to the North County Jail the North County Jail since closed right I sat down for 30 minutes and this guy said, hey, weren't you on Channel 7? <laughs> I said, yeah. He goes, you're Mr. Super Bowl. He goes, don't worry, I'm going to get you out of here. I was out. Um, so the next day, I was trying to keep on the newspapers and all that stuff. And then I went to see Mr. Bob. and I, I Because uh, Mr. Bob was the city, our chief administrative officer, then the city manager before the change in um, management, right? And um, I offered my resignation because I felt I embarrassed the city. And uh, he didn't take it. And he told me the story of a Richmond, um, I'll just say a situation in Richmond that was very similar to mine. Um, and those persons, um, because of the, were, rewarded, were rewarded for their loyalty, okay? So he backed me. At a time when most people would not back you, he backed me. And so after that, I, mean, I was already working like hell, okay? But I worked even harder because there are so many people in Oakland that pull against you. I would go into work every single day, and there was this one guy that worked for public works so that would always say, oh, he, he would laugh at me and say, that's the guy that's trying to bring Super Bowl here, ha, ha, ha. And I would say, that's Super Bowl Oakland. So I had had enough of that. This went on for about two weeks. And finally, I started lecturing him every single day. I said, say Super Bowl Oakland. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Right? I kept, as I would go to work, Super Bowl Oakland. Super Bowl Oakland. Super Bowl Oakland. That's how I would say. I would say, Super Bowl Oakland. Right? After about uh, 14 days straight of that, he said, Super Bowl Oakland. I said, that's it. I made a convert, a cheerleader. Because you had to get it in Oakland's mind, collectively, that it could succeed. 
That's the problem. And now we have the people that live in Oakland now who are new, they still think of Oakland as Brooklyn to San Francisco. We didn't think that. We thought of Oakland as the city. We didn't call Oakland the town. That's an old thing. See, now that's revived, okay? But there was those of us who believe that Oakland should be the number one city in the Bay Area, and that's what we were trying to do. We were trying to outdo San Francisco. Now, if you think about that, the resulting economic competition is healthy for everybody, right? If you're playing along. But what happens is you start giving things up. Like we gave up the Warriors. Or we gave up the opportunity to have a downtown baseball stadium. Does it help us? No, it doesn't. Okay? We're not fighting the economic development game. Or what happens when you have, in West Oakland, you lose the army base, and you have somebody that wants to build a bulk terminal, but then you have everybody else says, oh, no, you're going to haul coal. You can't do that. And then the developer says, wait a minute. I figured out a way to bring all of these different commodities in at low emission, thereby creating basic jobs that are less likely to be, you know, taken over by automation, right? It's a big problem. But do people want to hear that? Yeah, if they're told. What happens when you have the media that doesn't tell the story? You see what I'm getting at? This is Oakland. We're always trying to figure out a way not to do something that helps people. Basic, good economic development. That's been our history. Okay? But my point about that was, was Robert. And my point is that Robert is the kind of person he, he sticks to you, uh, sticks with you, and, um, and he backs you when it seems like all is dark and all is lost. And that's why he would be my friend forever. Because for that reason, all right? And... You should always look for those people in your life, people that are going to stick with you through thick and thin, and they realize your value to society and your value to what they're doing, all right? Now, of course, you know, look, I'm a maverick. I love being a maverick. I love establishing my own reservation as opposed to going off the reservation. That's me. So it takes um, special people to want to have a guy like me in charge. Robert Bob was a special person. When I was working on the Super Bowl, originally we had a person from SMG I've talked about before standing in our way. I found out that she was telling us something that wasn't, I won't go into detail for the time, that wasn't true. I told Robert Bob, I said, Robert, here's the situation. He called an emergency meeting. He put me in charge. Lee Steinberg helped me. He's, that's been my friend to this day, okay? Lee backed me. Had a number of people on there. The only place we went south was, and I thought I had all the votes lined up for the Coliseum Joint Powers Authority meeting, and they took an action of no action. And I thought I had Larry Reed's vote, and I didn't. Okay. And so, yeah, it was hard. Because you always feel like people are working against you, and that's what Robert experienced to a degree in Washington with a council member, and you wonder why, you know? You think you've got everything worked out, all the numbers, all the politics, all the specialists, and there's always something you didn't anticipate. These projects are hard to get off the ground. They really are, okay? They're not for the faint of heart. And there were times I thought my heart was going to explode, <laughs> right? So reward a guy like Robert Baum because, again, and, and think about that in the context of all these projects that get built, particularly uh, when you watch a television program. You know, do some research and say, how did that get built? And then also talk to the A's and say, hey, you know, be a better partner with the city government as a whole so that the council members are not at odds to what you're trying to do. And for all of his brilliance, Dave Caval has not effectively done that with all the council members. And I'm just saying that straight up with full knowledge. Dave does not call me. He, he said to me last year, I'll call you. I have never heard from him, okay? 
We talked once, and I've talked about it April 4th of 2017. That's it, okay? She says, thank you, Robert Bob and Zinni62. Thanks. Thank you. Um, it's hard stuff. It really is. You know? It really is. So, hey, look. Like I said, I learned a great deal. Um, <laughs> among other things, I don't drink anywhere near like I did before. I, it came from the time when we had the cow drinking song and... It was a different, it was different. It was the three martini lunch time. That was the, that was around the time that three martini lunch was beginning to wane, you know? And so you always got deals done over cocktails. And uh, I remember uh, it's a guy named um, Joe DeLuca. And Joe DeLuca's son is Nico DeLuca. Nico DeLuca is a fine person. Anyway, his dad, late Joe DeLuca, managed the very mean political trick of simultaneously being planning commissioner, I kid you not, in Oakland and San Francisco at the same time. Remember he came over to City Hall, uh, this was 1998, and he goes, Zini, I'm gonna make you an honorary Italian. <laughs> he had this convertible Jag, right? So I get in this Jag, we go over to North Beach, we go to, it's called Manja. Um, Mancha means eat in Italian. And uh, some of the most powerful business people in North Beach, basically, which means some of the most powerful business people in San Francisco. Um, we had three hour lunch, because that's how they do it in the old country. Yeah. Um, that's where you meet people in it's through those relationships that you understand how to get deals done. And again, Complex deals, stadiums, developments are not easy, are not easy. Uh, but those guys, you know, uh, and a couple of gals at the time, yeah, uh, they all had one thing in common. They loved to cocktail. <laughs> and if you refused to drink, it was considered to be an insult. Okay. So uh, times are different now, I think, fortunately, uh, for the most part. Yeah. But... Um, but that was the way it was then, you know. It was part of the culture. Anyway, there you go. So, uh, again, congratulations, Robert Bob. Thanks a lot, man. And uh, for those of you out there, again, remember something. Deals like that are hard to put together. And also remember that Oakland has to be reminded of its past to move forward to its future, if anything, so it doesn't make those mistakes again. Don't chase away talented people. Don't fear to be great. Don't be afraid of having the will and the initiative to complete big projects. Hey, thanks a lot, everybody. I'll see you.